Hi, um, this is Evan here, also known as Molendinarius. And in this video, I'm going to answer the question, how do I go about learning Latin? Now, unless you are in a very privileged situation, and that is that you are a school student in one of the very few schools that still teach Latin to an advanced level, or you are one of the very few students on the planet who are enrolled in a higher level Latin course at university, uh, you are stuck. Firstly, these courses are located in very specific geographical locations. And secondly, they are expensive. There's another problem in that many of these courses are aimed at teaching Latin grammar and decoding Latin, but not in teaching Latin in the same way that you would, for example, learn French or German or a modern language. This presents a problem. Um, the main problem is that students that come out of these courses uh, are very slow readers and have to render their Latin into their own language first in order to understand it. And only after a great many years of exposure to the language, they start to develop an internal uh, system where they just read the Latin without having to translate. So the, the question is, how do you, if you're not in such a unique situation as, as being at school or on one of these very rare university courses, how do you go about learning Latin? Now, there are a vast number of people all over the world who have taught themselves Latin um, and who learn Latin by themselves. Fortunately, there are more resources available now than there probably have ever been um, at all for somebody who wants to learn Latin by themselves. Two things are responsible for this. One is that Google went out and started to scan all the books in the world's libraries. And these scans are now available on Google Books and also on a website called archive.org. Or you can also access them through another uh, interface called Open Library. The European Union has a, a similar one called Europeana, where you can also search for books in European libraries. So there's a vast amount of material. Books that haven't been seen for hundreds of years have suddenly reappeared. And this is very useful. The, the other thing that Google did was Google scanned um, this book. Now, this is my version of it, which I made for myself at the very beginning when the scan first became available. And this is Adler's practical grammar of the Latin language. And what Adler does is he takes a 19th century uh, language teaching book, which was trying to teach lang language in a modern way as a spoken language. The, the book itself was originally written by Henri Ollendorf, and there were a great number of these. If you look up Ollendorf, O-L-L-E-N-D-O-R-F-F, -F, and there's even a word in English, Ollendorfian, uh, which was coined to describe this, this method of language learning, which is extremely repetitive, thorough, um, but oral, which is its great benefit here when it comes to Latin. Um, and he translated it uh, into Latin and died the following year. So very, very few copies of this book existed. Uh, and it was never very popular because the method of studying Latin at universities and in the schools at the time was not aimed at being able to speak the language. Adler himself could speak Latin. And when he arrived in New York uh, from um, Germany, he found that the other professors at the University of New York who were teaching Latin could not converse with him in the language. Uh, they could read it, but they couldn't hold a conversation. He believed that you had to have some kind of a, a gut um, knowledge of a language. It's not enough to know the, lang the, the grammar, etc. In fact, you could learn the language by exposure to it, if you had enough exposure, without knowing much grammar. This is how people learn languages when they go to live in foreign countries. 
They, they hear the language around them all the time. They start using it. The first few months are very painful. The first year is painful. And then eventually the language knowledge starts to build up. And after a few years, uh, you have good language knowledge. Now, if you are studying at home, the main problem is direction, direction and perseverance. You need something to pull you through so that you will complete your studies. Now, what I've done is this. I've taken Adler's book, which is enormous, um, with immense amounts of practical exercises, and I've turned it into an audio course. This took me two years of pretty much full-time work. I was working on it about six to seven hours a day for two years. And what I did was, firstly, I went through Adler's book with a dictionary and checked the uh, quantity of every single word. And th this is an issue when you're speaking Latin in what's called the restored classical pronunciation. The ancient Romans made distinctions between long vowels and short vowels. We, um, like, apple, apple. Right, to put an English example, um, so the, the long A and the short A, um, and uh, hate, hat, right? we have this distinction in, in English, right? hat, hat, so we have this in Latin too, malum and malum, so I went through that, that took some time, and then I started recording very, very slowly. So at the very beginning of my book, the, the recordings are like, the, the pronunciation is very slow, very uh, studied. So if you do know Latin, it's going to sound extremely slow. But if you listen to English audio recordings for students who are just beginning to learn English, you will find they do it the same way. The uh, language is extremely well enunciated and almost over pronounced so what i do is i accentuate the long vowels i extend them slightly this is to help you develop a memory for the pronunciation so when you do start to speak yourself and you can start to read and speed up um, you will retain the pronunciation now what using adler will do is adler will pull you through if you persevere um, all you need to do is have the textbook and you need to listen intensively to the Adler. Um, what I did was this. I recorded the grammar sections of Adler in separate audio files. I gave extended audio expositions of the grammar. So where you have a verb table, I will go through the entire verb table. When I have a new noun, I will go through the, decla the, 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 the declension of the entire new noun. Um, and so there are far more examples, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of more examples in my audio course than in the actual book. And the book itself is extremely thorough. It's uh, uh, some um, 600 pages of a uh, very small uh, type. So if this was a modern book, it would be twice, if not three times the size. In addition to that, I have recorded the exercises in Latin these are question, answer, question, answer, question, answer exercises. And the answer is contained in the material of the question. I recorded those in Latin and then in English and then in Latin again. So you can listen to them. These are in part B of each lesson. And then part C of each lesson is simply all of the Latin material in that lesson recited in Latin only. So the grammatical sections and also the series of questions and answers in Latin only. Uh, for example, do you have a hat? Yes, I have a hat. Do you have a blue hat? Yes, I have a blue hat. Do you have my uncle's blue hat? No, I do not have your uncle's blue hat, but I do have his yellow bow tie. These are the kinds of questions and answers you'll find in Adler. Um, they are very thorough, a little bit eccentric. Adler did not make up the examples he's using. He simply took the examples that were formulated by Ollendorf in his language method 
and translated them into Latin. The advantage of this is that as you go through the course, the vocabulary builds steadily. Um, the grammar isn't protected to the same degree it is in some modern books. Um, it's just the complexity of the sentence structures uh, increases. Um, and grammar is sort of taught alongside, um, sort of parallel with, with what's going on. So you're doing these exercises in Latin, English, Latin. Simply listening to them in Latin is, I believe, enough, as long as you listen to them intensely um, and try to answer the questions yourself. And then you hear my answer and see whether or not you're on track. It's important to engage, not just to passively listen, but to try to answer these questions as well. And then you listen to my answer in Latin. Um, try to translate as you go along in your head and then see, check my translation as I say it out loud. And try to do as much as you can orally. If you do use Adla, it will probably take you two to three years to get through. In other words, as long as it would take you to get through the language if you're doing a full-time university course. I've had um, very advanced students use my course. So it's quite popular um, with master students and PhD students who've been learning Latin for many, many years, but have never activated the language, so to speak, and made it work for them in terms of having an internal thought process in Latin. The goal is that you can pick up any book, pretty much, and read it. Obviously, you will need a dictionary for, for words as um, you're a second language student, and so you will continue to need a dictionary, but less and less. If you look at my website, that's Latinum, dot org dot uk you will find that not only are the adler um, lessons there but there's also a series of lessons by this chap here john amos comenius um, this is the orbis sensualium pictus uh, which is an extremely useful book for example let's have a look at uh, at one of these things here for example this chapter here um, what he does is he gives a picture here every part is numbered and then in a parallel text um, the latin and then here the english translation and what is interesting is the the english translates um, the english alternates between italics and a normal typeface and so does the latin and so you can see which section in the english relates to um, which section in the latin um, by the typeface. Uh, I went through this text as well with uh, great care and marked up all the quantities so the uh, when I read it out loud I'm reading with correct quantity which will then give you this um, instinctive ability to read with correct quantity. There are people that say it's impossible, don't bother trying to learn the restored classical pronunciation because you'll never be able to acquire a, an ear for the correct quantity, the length of the vowels in, in Latin words. However, if you use the oral method that I developed, you will end up with an instinctive um, ability to, to read Latin um, with correct quantity most of the time. Obviously, you, there are going to be issues here and there, and some words academics argue about what the correct pronunciation of the, those words was. But there is very great consensus in the academic world of, about how Latin was pronounced um, in the time of the, the late Republic, because we have an enormous amount of evidence that helps us to reconstruct the pronunciation. And that's what I've used. So if you want to learn Latin by yourself. It's not enough just to get a textbook and learn the rules and go through it in a rule-based way. Very few people can learn a language that way. Maybe one or two percent of a general population can learn the language by studying the grammar. Most people have to learn by hearing the language. That means hearing stories in the language, hearing conversation in the language, etc. etc. Now Adler gives you thousands and thousands and thousands of examples of scripted conversational interactions 
And then you have things like Comenius, you have the scripted conversations of Corderius, which I also recorded, those were aimed at schoolboys. And then once you've done those, you can go on and read Erasmus and Wiwes and the thousands of other scripted conversations that were written in the Renaissance by teachers to try to get their students up to a higher level of spoken fluency. Of course, spoken fluency was very important because if you went to university anywhere in Europe in the 1500s and the 1600s, the courses and lectures and texts and textbooks were all in Latin. Um, if you went in Germany, you went in England, um, Scotland, Spain, Italy, it doesn't matter where you went to university, you were expected to be able to function in the Latin language. So if you want to learn Latin by yourself, um, I would suggest that you get hold of my audio materials and use those as a goad to drive you forward in your studies. Because if you just have a textbook and work your way through that without sufficient oral input, um, your, the Latin you acquire um, will, I think, be defective. Um, certainly in terms of your ability to, to read with um, reasonably good pronunciation and to have an instinctive knowledge of the language as opposed to um, a grammatical analysis of the language, which is a separate thing. Latin is very attractive uh, in terms of that because its, its grammar is regular to some degree. It's got lots of exceptions, lots of weirdness, but it has a lot of regularity. Um, so it's not some mathematical language. It's as weird as any other language. But it has lots of systems and lots of um, patterns which render it very attractive to people that are interested in that kind of thing. But even if you learn all those things off by heart, it's not going to give you that instinctive knowledge of a language uh, that you need. Languages, after all, are primarily about communication and our brains um, formed to deal with language primarily through spoken interaction, through hearing and listening and speaking. And the interface of text came much later. And that actually adds another barrier level between acquisition. Uh, text is useful. You need to be able to write. And with Latin, of course, you need to be able to read because in the end, although the method for learning is oral, the goal is to be able to read written text. But that comes later. We don't start off beginning students by throwing Shakespeare at them or Milton at them. Uh, we start them with very basic materials and very basic texts. And so it should be with Latin. The great heights of Roman literature, if you are learning this language, will have to wait. Um, no one in their right mind would consider starting to learn English um, and expect to be able to attend a Shakespeare play after 12 months of studying English and know what's going on. Even many native English people struggle with that. So, so that, that's it, really. So if you want to learn Latin, I would highly recommend uh, to go, firstly, on my YouTube channel and have a look at the, the various Latin course materials I have here on, on this channel, um, which will supplement your learning. But these materials are not complete in and of themselves, but they will certainly start you along the way. Um, so the London Latin course or um, the Cursum uh, Latinum, which is taught in Latin only, an experimental course that I put up here on YouTube, which teaches Latin through the medium of Latin. There are about 300 lessons in that course. Um, have a look through the, the playlists on, on my channel. Um, the channel is called Evan1965, um, or I think you can also find it under my name, Evan Der Milner, or if you search for Latinum, or if you go to latinum.org.uk, and search there for the YouTube in index. Um, although I haven't updated it recently, enough of that material is there and there's an index of um, a large number of my YouTube videos, probably uh, about a thousand of them are indexed there. Um, that, that's all really. Um, good luck and uh, any questions about learning Latin, please do 
ask. Wale, goodbye.